Hello everyone, welcome to Merlin's Manor. Today I'm going to be doing a playthrough of Final Girl. I'm not going to go over all of the how to play here. Uh, Rodney Smith on Watch It Play did a very excellent video on it. I know he doesn't normally do solo modes of board games, but since this was just a solo game, he went ahead and did one, so you can check that out if you want a full how to play. I will be going over how to play what I am doing today, and that is Terror from Above. And so we're going to be playing this Terror from Above vignette expansion, and I will go over the rules for that specifically as well as you can catch some of the rules as we go along, as you see how the game plays through. Uh, first of all, I want to go, up this, go over the setup for this version, this Terror from Above vignette. First of all, there's no killer on the board, uh, unlike the rest of them, and so it plays a little bit differently. Uh, first of all, this area is going to be different over here. You are going to have, instead of the, the big board here for the killer, you have the small Bloodlust uh, card here. You have this card that tells you about spawning in birds. And you're going to spawn birds in whenever you see the boot or the bird foot symbol. And you'll do that by rolling two dice. And when you roll those, you will basically take the two numbers and you can decide whether you want to put that many birds in or that many birds in. And if you're going to spawn in the other location. So you choose one to spawn the number of birds and the other to spawn in a certain location. One says you distribute them in any spaces. Two, any single space. Three, any search space. 4 any exit space, 5 the nearest victim space, and 6 in your space. And so you kind of have to decide, am I going to put them in the optimal places, or am I going to put the least amount of birds in and make that decision based on what you rolled. And you want to roll low uh, for both of those dice because the lower numbers are better both for the amount of birds as well as the places you're putting them. And you also have your finale and your dark power cards over here. Since there's no killer on the board, uh, the setup here where the killer is, you're going to put 3 birds there. And then everywhere where you don't have people based on the setup card, you're going to put one bird. Now that the game is over and you lose if all of these spaces have three birds on them or if your final girl dies. And so those are the two lost conditions. It's a little bit different here than the other um, way that things go because you've got those birds on the thing. The way you win is af after you get rid of uh, after you activate your girl's special ability or there are no victims left on the board, you're going to put three special victims out and those three special victims need to be rescued. That's if it's on hard mode. On normal mode, you're going to only put two out and on easy mode, you're going to put one out. And those start in the furthest search space from you and then the next closest and then finally all three if you're playing on hard. And so the win condition there isn't to defeat anybody, it's to save all these special victims that come out once you get to a certain trigger point in the game. Now I want to go over a little bit of some of the other differences in this. Now the birds, when they attack, they will do one damage per bird in that space. But they will not attack, and, and, and I want to make emphasize this because I got this wrong the first time I played this expansion. They will not attack victims if there are less than three birds in that space and you are not in that space with them. And so now if there's, a, there's at least one bird in your space, they will attack. Whether If there's a victim there, they'll attack the victim first uh, and they'll, they'll attack you if there's no victim. Now also another thing I got wrong the first time I played this is that they, when they attack, they attack one target and one target only. So if you have three birds in a space and three victims, one victim will die. Not, not three, not two, just one. And so you want to make sure that you don't make this hard on yourself by making the same mistake I did. They will only attack one target, and that's only if there's at least three birds in that space or you are in that space and there is one bird. So keep that in mind as far as how all that goes. Now when you are in a space with a bird, you can attack the birds there. And birds in the space can be attacked just like normal, and one bird per damage dealt uh, will be eliminated. And so uh, you can actually kill multiple birds in one attack that way. It's a little bit different from the rules for the other um, games, the other feature films. Uh, some other things to keep note of. Uh, you're not going to put any special victims out other than uh, when you get to that point where you're putting... Uh, the, the, the victims you're trying to save out. So if an ca event card comes up that says to place a special victim, you will not do that. You'll just ignore that card or alternately you can choose to draw another event card. Uh, there's two different ways you can decide to play that, whichever you prefer.
Now, if um, a card specifies for the killer to be placed somewhere, you'll place three birds there instead. And if a card specifies for the killer to move, you will spawn birds instead, like I mentioned earlier with the footprint symbol. Now, some other differences. When the birds attack, the final girl can actually use reaction cards to prevent damage to anyone in her space. Normally, you can't use reaction cards to protect victims, but in this case, you actually can. However, to protect the victims, all the damage must be deflected. If there's a single point of damage, it only takes one point of damage to kill a victim. Now, one thing to note also is the special victims, when they come out, cannot be harmed or removed from the game in any way. So they will not take any damage from the birds. And any cards that tell you to remove anybody, they will not be removed. You'll ignore those as well. And so, with all that having been said, we're going to go ahead and get into this game. I'll be playing with Melanie, which is the final girl from the Terror from Above vignette. And I've got this set up, all the rest of it, as a normal game. And let's go ahead and get into this. I'm going to take my starting hand here, which if you don't know, has two walks, two focuses, a short rest, and a weak attack in it. And the first thing I'm going to do is walk. And I get one success, and I can turn in two cards for a second success. I think I will do that. I will turn in the short rest and a focus. And so I move down one on this for spending the walk. I'm going to move one, two into this place with this bird. Hope for the best that this is not a mistake, because now I'm going to do a weak attack to try and kill said bird. And I got no successes, but one. I can turn two cards. I'm going to have to get rid of the focus and walk because I really need to get rid of that bird. And so what I'm going to do there is I'm able to take out that with one success, but I lose one heart. That's worth it to get rid of that bird. And that's the end of my turn. Uh, I went ahead and I only did two things. So I only spent that one time because the weak attack doesn't spend time. I have five time to spend on getting things for next turn. I'm definitely going to need a sprint card for two. I'm going to need a search card also for two. So one, two, one, two. And then I'll get a close call card that spends all my money. Didn't want to have to spend that many cards. I was hoping to get out there with holding on to a couple focus or a walk card, but it was more important to get the movement and the attacks done than I needed to do. So these will go in here, where I can always get those for free after they have set there for uh, a round. Let's go ahead and see what they're going to do now. And we started with four on the terror track, which gave me two dice to roll. Now they're going to go ahead and spawn birds in. And that's what this... Uh, first, they're going to attack anything in their space, which there's nothing currently in any of their spaces. So they're going to spawn birds in by rolling these dice. And that got a two and a six. So I can either spawn... Six birds on any single space, which they will actually spread out. Uh, you can only have three maximum on a space, and then they'll spread out. Or I can spawn two birds in my space. I do not want the birds in my space. So I am going to go ahead and put three birds there. And then that will spread out to there. Okay. And so now we do a terror card. And I am glad I did not put birds in my space. I knew that would happen. You can't save us. No one can. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next terror card. Otherwise, all victims in your space must panic twice. Well, that's not the best thing. However, um, the next thing that's going to happen is they're going to attack uh, anyone, whether it's a, a victim or myself. And then they're going to spawn some more birds in. So let's go ahead and resolve these. Uh, I'm going to panic this one victim that's in my space. I'm hoping it'll move towards the docks. Let's see. That's what happened, too. Nice. Now, I have to panic him twice, though, is a problem. The next one is a four. Um, where's the four go? Oh, the four goes right into there. That's not good. Maybe I should just let them attack in my space. That's the main reason I was trying to not do that. Okay, now let's see what we're spawning in. Okay, we've got one and four. Four is the nearest exit space. I'm going to spawn one bird in that. Which is the nearest exit space? That's going to be this one right here. I forgot. Actually, this one's going to take out this guy. They do attack. Oh, yeah, there's those three birds there. 
Oh, and there should have been an event card revealed at the beginning of the game. Choose two of the following spaces. You usually should have or docks and place a secret to to token at each. You may move between these spaces if they were adjacent. Enemies cannot use the secret tunnel. So, choose two of the following. So, I'm going to go ahead and do the dock and the utility shed. And so, now we move. Now we do the one for the actual thing here. Clinging campers. There's no penalty for the first victim you save during the action phase. For each additional victim saved, you're gonna. It's going to cost me a heart. So I can only save one person at a time or spend some hearts to save them. Now Melanie does have the ability to get hearts back when she saves two people. So uh, that may be an okay thing. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend my sprint card. To roll. I got one success. Which means I can move up to two spaces. Unfortunately though... I only want to move the one space. If I could have gotten three, I would have gone and saved that person and come back. Well, I could spend my close call. No, I'm, I'm not going to spend that. So one. And then I'm going to search. And the three that I don't want to spend it because I want to save it in case I do badly here. I got one success. That's all I needed because I wanted to get this axe that was here at the dock. Which, when you get one success with searches, you take the top item card. And then I'm going to end my turn. That cost me another there. So now I have four to buy with. I get all my zero cost cards back. And I'm trying to decide if I want another search card so I can search before I leave this area. Sounds like a good idea. Oh, but I, I really want to get a distraction card though. I think I'm actually going to get a distraction in a close call. That's going to bring me down to zero. Or actually, no way. I'm going to spend my other close call. To get one more time so that I can actually buy a search instead and back up to six okay now they are going to attack in their spaces there's nobody to attack they're gonna spawn oh my that's the worst thing I could have rolled double success why can't I roll that on my turn I'm gonna spawn six birds in my space which means three here at the dock and it means three here not a good, not good at all. Now we're going to see what their tarot card does. I'm going to discard that one, bring up the new one. So this is going to go up. Instead of spawning birds as normal, roll one die and place that many birds in the nearest search area, which is where I am. So we're going to put two birds, and it's already full, so they're going to spawn outward. That becomes three. That goes one. Nobody died that turn, but things are escalating. Oh, and these go back into the market. Oh, actually, no. Before I save that person, before I save that person, I'm actually going to do weak attack because if I'm successful, I can use the axe. I have one success. Which means I lose a heart, but I'm going to do three damage. These things are all gone. Because the axe allows me to add two to my attack. And now that this space is clear... Yeah, I think I still will do the same thing, though. And, of course, I also have to lose a heart. I'll stay where I am, but I'm going to go ahead and decrease the horror track by one. Oh, this one will get attacked. Oh, I did not think about that. So instead of bringing the horror track down, I will actually use the move two spaces. Did not think about the fact there's two, three birds there. Okay. So. Horror track stays where it was. So now we spawn, nobody gets killed. We spawn birds in one and one. That is the best roll you can possibly get. Now I have to decide where I'm going to put one singular bird. And since they don't actually attack... They're victims. If there's only one, I'm going to put it in that far, far space. And now this goes back six time, and we move on to my new turn. And on this turn, the first thing I'm going to do is save this guy. Bring that down one. 
Next thing I'm going to do... Oh, I forgot to do a tarot card. That may not be the first thing I'm going to do. Let's see. So this guy's still here. What's that noise? Let's go and see. If there are no victims on the board, discard it. There are. All victims move one space toward the closest enemy. Well, this is kind of a weird one to uh, for this with the birds. Um, so basically, if they're already in a space, they'll stay there. Otherwise, I guess it's not that weird. They're going to go there. Oh, no, all victims are going to move. That's right. So if they're with a... So he's going to stay there. These guys are going to come this way. This guy's going to come this way. This guy's going to come... Now, this is an interesting situation. Depending on... He can go one of two different ways. Uh, if we go with the infinite evil version, he'd come this way. And basically die on his turn. Or he could go one of the... Uh, he could go this way and it wouldn't... Um, I'm going to have him go this way. I don't like the infinite evil. So, there he goes that way. Now, everybody's... Oh, this guy moves one this way. Oh, and this guy is going to die on his turn because the only options he has is to go there. So now they attack. This guy goes there. Horror is going to go up one. And then they're going to move, which means spawn, actually, in their case. So one and three... So if I put three there, they're going to come right into my space. Or sorry, if I put one there, it's going to come right into my space. Um, that's not the worst thing in the world. Or I can put three in any spaces. I think I'm going to put three in any spaces. I don't think I want... Well, no, I'll put one spill over into my space. One will spill over into my space. That's not too bad. Okay. So now I'm going to save this person. And I think I'll take the guard reaction card. Okay, I don't know what I'm getting ready to roll for. Um, I just walk. Okay, I got a five and a three. I can walk one space. Or I can spend two cards and walk two spaces. I think my best bet right now is to get out of where all these birds are. I'm going to walk two spaces to here. So I got rid of two cards to do that. I lose one time, but I have five time to spend is the other part of this. I get all these freebie cards back, and I can get five worth. I think I'm going to get a sprint because I need to get mobile and a distraction because I need to get that down. So that's five right there. It comes back up to six. These go back to the market. Now we're spawning birds in. Two and four. So I can put Four in any single space, or two in the nearest exit space. I don't mind putting two in the nearest exit space. Because I am getting away from that exit anyway. Okay. Now we do a terror card. The birds are attacking. In your space and all spaces where birds outnumber victims, we're going to have... Them get attacked. There's nobody in my space, and birds don't outnumber victims in any spaces. So if no attacks occurred, though, we are going to spawn birds, and the bloodlust is going to go up. So I can put six birds in any single space, or two birds in my space, and I'm going to go ahead and do the two birds in my space. And then the bloodlust goes up. The dark power gets revealed. Bird Nado. During upkeep, if there are 10 or more total birds in your space and adjacent spaces, you lose three hearts. 
So we want to stay away from clusters of birds, basically. Okay, first thing I'm going to do on my turn is roll for distraction. I can turn that into two wins by getting rid of two cards. I'll get rid of walk and short rest in order to make that distraction happen. So that goes up to, by two, and then this is going to go up by two as well. I'm going to do a focus. I may get my third die if I'm lucky. I am not lucky. So that was a waste, and I lose two time. I'm going to sprint. I get one success. So I'm going to go one, two into here. And then I can save one of them and lower that. And then I'm going to leave, do I leave the other one there or do I save it and take the heart hit but give a heart back? I think I'll save the other one. No, I'm going to leave the, that one there. I'm going to leave that one there. I'm going to do a weak attack instead. Oh, I get three dice now. And I got one success. I have no cards left to turn that into a second success, but it does kill this bird here. And that's the end of my round. Oh, I forgot to do this for the sprint. Okay, so I have five to spend. Uh, sprint, again, is very effective in this game. These free cards. The sprint brings that to three. Three to spend. I could do a distraction card to really ramp that up. As well as if, if it goes up extra, I get extra money to spend for next round. Or I could get a guard and a close call. I think I'm going to get a guard and a close call. So boom. And then back up to six. So now, there's not ten birds around me. Of course, we're not to the upkeep anyway, but so there might be by the time. So let's go ahead and resolve their roll for birds spawning in. Five and six, oh my word. Okay, so I can spawn six in my space or five in the nearest victim space. Five in the nearest victim space it is. I mean, sorry, five in my space or six in their space. Uh, well, hmm. If I spawn them in my space, No, I'm going to spawn in the nearest victim space. Sorry, victim. Well, it's only it's one less bird, and I have ways to mitigate, maybe. So I'll spawn it in my space, I guess. So three. Oh, I forgot to. No. Yeah, nothing happens as far as the attack goes. Okay, so three. Four, five. Okay. So, now we resolve the next terror card. Ooh, the terror is going up. I should have gotten a distraction card. If there's at least one special victim in play, they're going to spawn birds in, but there is not, so we're moving on. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do on my turn is save this guy. You are saved. And I think I'll get, I'll use the move one space actually on that one, so I can move here. Oh, these all go back to the market. So, other than that, I'm going to sprint. 
I got two successes. So I'm going to go one to here, two to there, and three to here. And with that, I'm going to save two victims. I will gain a heart for the first one, lose a heart for the second one, gain the heart back. So that was pretty efficient. Now, once per action phase, I may lose a heart to deal two damage, divided as I choose among enemies in my space. And then also for each additional victim I save, I restore a heart. I use one. And so now... So... I'm going to try to save... No, I'm not going to try to save him. I'm actually... I'm going to use that ability to take out two birds here. So that's going to become one bird. Then I'm going to... Things are getting awkward at this point. There's not a whole lot I want to do in the moment. I'm going to focus. I do want to get that back up some. Uh, I can move it up one and lose a time, or I can spend two cards. I'm not going to spend two cards. I'm just going to lose one at a time to move that up. Now, I think I'm just going to end my turn at this point. Didn't get a whole lot accomplished other than saving. Well, I guess that's a lot. I have four to spend. I get all these back. Definitely going to want... Oh, I got four to spend. Do I want to get a Retaliate? Retaliate could be good. Getting Retaliate for four. Then these go back to the market. Now we roll for them. There's not going to be ten probably near me, but we'll see. Oh, five and six. Again, my choices are to spawn five where I am, or six next to me. I'm gonna go out and spawn five where I am, I guess. So that's gonna become, that's two, they're gonna branch out. Three, four, like that. And, ooh boy, five like that. Okay. So they are branching out. See what the next card is. Draw. Maybe things are starting to go our way. We get to draw the top card of any item deck. So. I believe I will get the Lucky Rabbit's Foot. But that's going to be handy in just a moment. If there was one in my space that actually would have attacked me. And I would have used my guard card. Let's back up and fix this. I deflect all the attack. Okay. So. Okay. The things are starting to go our way. I am going to... Use the Lucky Rabbit's Foot to decrease the terror level by one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and focus as well. Why not? Let's see if we can get it all the way up. Two successes. Not only do we go all the way up there, but we also get two time. And now I will sprint. One success, and I can convert for another success. I'm actually going to go, I'm going to take it as it is. The one success. One, two. Save this person. I get a heart back. And then I'm going to spend a heart to destroy two of those things in my space. Oh, sprint used one time. I'm going to go ahead and walk. Hope for the best here. Um... Rid of two cards, I can get over there.
short rest. I'm going to hold on to the weak attack. Ah, close call. Might not be the best idea to get rid of that one, but we shall see. And then I'm going to try to walk again. That's why I went ahead and didn't get rid of the walk, so I might be able to get back over there. Oh, my. Two, f two turning cards. I don't want to turn in these cards. I can either just lose two time. Oh, I forgot to lose the time for the walk. I can either lose two time and a heart to move one space. Not a good idea. Or just lose two time and stay where I'm at. I'm going to go ahead and try to do weak attack now. I want to keep this bird from attacking and wow. That was the worst that could happen right there. Three fails. So I actually lose a heart for that and end the turn. I have four time to spend. Definitely getting a sprint card. Get my focus card back. And I have two. Get a guard card, I guess. Okay. These all go back to the market. Now they're going to attack in the spaces they can. I'm going to use guard in my space. And I deflect, I reduce by two, which is enough. And then nobody else is going to get attacked because there's no other places. There are victims. Five and three. So I can put five birds in the nearest search spaces of the cabins, or I can put three birds in the nearest victim spaces, which is where I am. I think I'm going to put the three birds in my space. So if that becomes that, and one more is going to trickle out to there. Okay. Now let's see what happens here. Run for your life. If there are victims on the board, discard. Otherwise, uh, we're gonna all victims that are not in your space must panic. Well, there's victims in my space. The only victim is in my space, so he's not gonna panic. Um, all and so then we're gonna resolve a kill action in my space, which I have a retaliate card just for that purpose. Okay, I got one success, which means I reduce the attack by. Two, or I can get rid of two cards to completely reduce it. Sorry, bro. I don't think I'm going to spend two cards to do that. Well, wait. It's also going to... Yeah. Yep, sorry. You're gone. Terra's going to go up by one. Didn't quite reduce it enough for there being three birds there, but when I retaliate, I get one 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 damage to the birds, plus I can add my axe in for two more. All the birds do die off that just attacked us. And that's going to trigger the special victims coming out. And so the special victims, we're going to start with this one, which I believe is the furthest from me. And then this one's definitely in the next furthest. And do we want to go for hard? Let's go for hard. Let's see what happens. Okay. So. Now we're also going to spawn in for them. Six birds on my space. Why can't I roll like this for myself? Three, that becomes three. That becomes three. Well, that's not fun. Okay. Oh. Those were from here. Yeah. Okay, so sprint's probably all I'm going to manage this round. Oh, maybe we get three dice. 
And I do get two successes. So one, two, three. Do I save this person or use... Oh, well, yeah, I save them because they can't be attacked anyway. And I'm going to call that a day. I used one for that. Remember, uh, take note, retaliate and guard cards do not go back in until after your next round. So I get all these free cards back. Definitely getting a sprint card. This movement is pretty much all I need to focus on. Uh, so I lost one for moving and then two for that. I'm at three. I'm going to buy an improvise. Hope for the best. Oh, wait, no. Actually, I'm going to buy a guard. I'm going to buy a guard and a close call. It's going to be way more important right now. Okay. So all these will go back in. Oh, once per turn I could have done that. Did I want to? Yeah, I do want to do that. So they're going to attack me. I'm going to use my guard card. I got one success, which reduces it by two, which is all I needed to do. Then we're going to oops, spawn birds. Six and two. So six into any single space or two into my space. Let's go ahead and do it here and here. Okay. Now let's see what comes up. Where are they coming from? So we got to spawn more birds in. I'm going to spawn six in any single space because otherwise we're going to trigger another spawn. So let's do six here. It's going to move out to here. And who? Okay. So, sprint. Handy dandy sprint card. Got one success and can turn in for another. Let's get rid of two focus cards since they're not going to be as needed right now. I lose one time. I go one, two, three to there. Oh, that's going to be really handy actually because that's where the secret passage is. I'm going to do walk. Got one success. One success brings us to here. Wait, let me re read that real quick. You may move between the spaces as if they were adjacent. Okay, so I think I still need the walk. So I walk to there, bring him along with me. Spend a time. I'm going to use my other walk card. And I only need the one success. I walk there. They escape. And that's the game. So that's the game right there. Went ahead and saved all three victims, hard mode. Now, we didn't quite make it to the finale. The finale would have come up if two more cards had come out. Never used the motorboat keys. I almost did one time. So there you go. And that's how you play the Terror from Above vignette for Final Girl. I hope you've enjoyed this playthrough. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And I will catch you in the next video.